Today I'm going to start a series of videos regarding terms that every believer should know. Uh, these terms that we're going to go over today in the uh, videos following this, uh, they're not just for the apologist, for the pastor, for the theologian. These terms are very important to, to, to understand in order to grasp uh, the gospel, what God has done inside the life of a believer, what has taken place. Uh, these are Bible terms, and I believe that as we understand these better, we are more equipped to run the race that God has called us to run. I'm reminded as I'm going through these terms on this board, just a few years ago, uh, gathering a number of men in one room, and we started to go over these terms, and I was taken back a little bit, surprised at how few understood some of the basic terminology that I'm gonna share with you, uh, and two, the overwhelming joy of people discovering that's what that means, and wow, this means this, and they started to make these connections that they, they didn't make before. And we walked away with a sense of, uh, a sense of empowerment, of being equipped, of being able to understand what took place on the cross and what, has, what God is doing inside the life of a believer. So uh, let's get started. Every uh, terms every believer should know. The first one is sin. Uh, this is a one that is very common. You learn this growing up if you are in the church for any length of time. Uh, you hear about it even if you uh, were not a believer in God. Uh, sin is something that is common to us when it comes to the term. What does it simply mean? It means the missing of God's perfect standard or mark, which in the scriptures we understand to be the law of God or God's perfect standard of righteousness. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about sin being lawlessness. And so sin is missing the mark. It's missing the standard. It's something that took place early on in the garden. And because of sin, there are two uh, destructive results that have taken place as a result of the first man sinning. The first one is a bad heart and then a bad record. A bad heart is that when sin was introduced, when sin was committed, it penetrated the heart of mankind and the heart became cold toward God. The heart, um, in essence, died, so to speak. It's the power of sin now governed the heart. We would call this an, an evil inclination toward that which is not of God. The second thing that took place was a bad record now. We were fugitives on the run. That is the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is death. We were now guilty. I think that's a great term of understanding. We were guilty uh, before God because we broke the law of God. And so we not only as a result of sin have a bad heart, but we also have a bad record. And so the gospel has to answer both of those. Because if the gospel simply just forgives you, but does not change you, you are somebody that has a forgiven, you have been forgiven, but you go back to the very thing that you we're guilty of, and this is why it's called the power of sin. So the power of sin has to be broken, and the penalty of sin has to be dealt with, which is called justice. All right, so that, that's important to understand that specific term, sin. Okay, so these next two terms are in response to what was the result of sin. The first one is called regeneration, Re generation. It's a big term, but very easy to understand. It is the act of recreation by an omnipotent being. This is an act that only God could perform. Mankind could not perform this. I could not perform this on myself. No one could make this happen. It was the gracious uh, forethought act of recreation by an omnipotent being. It is the miracle that took place of God giving man a new heart, which resulted in a new life, consisted of a new nature, and we see it to be a new 
creation in the scriptures. That is what regeneration is. You'll see in Ezekiel, he talks about uh, taking the heart of stone out and giving us a heart of flesh under the new covenant that he's going to make with his people. That is the miracle of a new heart. That's regeneration. Uh, we see this also, uh, this term in Titus chapter 3, uh, verse number 5. So, regeneration is God's way of taking care of solving man's heart. So if my heart is bent away from the things of God, He then regenerates me by the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives me a new heart that now actually is awakened to the things of God. I start to have new desires. I start to long for God. I remember just the short week prior to me receiving Christ and being regenerated, or another term that you would see is born again. Um, I remember the week before and the week after, my desires were completely different. I wasn't trying to force my way to be a Christian. I was given a new heart. I was awakened now to the reality of God. I wanted to worship God. I wanted to spend time in His Word. I knew that I was given a new life. My nature had changed, and I discovered that I was a new creation. That was a powerful understanding and a reality to me. I'll give you a great example that I was that that um, I learned when I was in college. Is imagine for a moment that you have a pig and you have two. Um, you have a, a space in between this pig and you have a, a, an arrangement of um, amazing food, just a, a feast on a table, and then you have a mud pit with trash and some garbage type food, and you release the pig, where would he go? Because of his, it's his nature, he would move toward the mud pit. He would move to where he feels where he belongs and what is natural to him. Now imagine for a moment if that pig was transformed into a human while he was in that mud pit, he would feel like, oh, this is disgusting. Oh, I don't like this food. Oh, there's a feast. And you would gravitate now toward the feast. Why? Because the nature changed. You went from a pig to a human. That's what happened with us. Remember about the gospel, it is not about going from bad to good people. It is about going from dead to alive. So Christianity is not about just being good. It's about being alive in Christ. That's regeneration. So God came to fix the heart, which is the, the, the core issue of it all. So not only is regeneration an important term to understand, but so is this current term called justification, or to be made righteous, or justified, as you'll see in the scriptures. This is a declaration of a judge proclaiming someone innocent. I am now standing before God innocent because as a judge, He has proclaimed me in the courtroom of heaven from the accusations of the enemy. I have now been declared innocent. Now imagine, just imagine this. This is the, a reality that changed my life, realizing that I'm standing before God innocent, although I deserved hell, I deserved death, I was guilty of breaking, guilty of breaking the law, and now because of what Christ has done, I have been declared innocent. My record, which is right here, the bad record, uh, the bed record has been what? It's been clean. My record is clear. I no longer have a guilty conscience of that which I've done. Why? Because my record has been wiped clean. There is no more accusations that can come against me because I am no longer under the law. I'm dead to the law and I have been declared innocent. Uh, you're going to find this in Philippians 3.9, Galatians 2.16. Uh, look at those verses. But 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, And he who knew no sin became sin 
that we might be made what? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So God found a way to solve the bad heart by giving me a new heart through regeneration. And he found a way to clear my record through a thing called justification. And so now as I stand before God, my heart now longs for him and I don't and my record has been clean so I can now freely access the throne of God through the blood of Jesus. If God simply took care of my heart but not my record, I would still be guilty and I would live with a sense of guilt in shame and condemnation. If God just took care of my record but not my heart, I would go back to the sin that once had me bound. But God, by His grace, through regeneration and justification, was able to answer both the results that came from sin. I hope this helps you out as we continue to go through these terms. Um, if you have a question, please feel free to share it. If you're looking for a few more scriptures, you're gonna find it Romans 6, 1 and 2, Titus 3, 5, and the ones that I shared there below. So have a great day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for hitting the like button and subscribing. God bless.